Morning guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler and Christine and we're off early this morning, it's just 7 I think, whisker after 7 we've got a road trip as Christine just said, if you caught that and we're going around about an hour, almost an hour, we've got a place to clean out so uh, let's hit the road and here we are on the road unfortunately I had to voice over this section because my excellent road trip commentary which Christine filmed was totally overshadowed by the road noise of the van so that was unfortunate the long and the short of it is that we're off picking um, the lady is moving into town she can't look after the larger property anymore uh, she hasn't sold yet so she's not worried about total cleanup or rubbish removal we just get to have a bit of a pick and make a pile and work out what to offer her so this will be part one and uh, so follow our adventures see what we find we'll give you some valuations as we go and in the meantime here's some shots of dry australia okay we're here we've um, said our good mornings i've got to get into that shed before it gets too hot and there's a little garden shed over there behind the tank which has a little bit of stuff in it um, and there's a lot of stuff in the house that uh, carmel is going through and she's not going to keep very much and she's happy for us just to make a pile of what we're interested in and work out a price Anyway, it's um, quite a nice house. It was built about 30 or 40 years ago, I think. There is a nice vintage National Panasonic stereo unit there. There's some nice stuff on the mantelpiece. She does want to keep some um, special things, which is fair enough. But the clocks I've, I can grab. And there's a heap of stuff on the kitchen table or the dining table. Another clock, a lot of crystal, some cutlery. So we'll go through all this, and Christine's looking through the cupboards, I think. And we're down in the bedrooms. There's a few things down here. There's not a lot of stuff left in the house, actually. It's it's fairly... It's not cluttered like a lot of the places we go to. What have you found in here? Oh, uh, it's a nice crystal. Oh, okay. Some box crystal. Some speakers for you. Vintage speakers. I did spot this little globe, which is actually a lamp. So we're going to just gather all the stuff, make a pile down the other end of the house <clears throat> and then we can work out a price. So there's not much in the little garden shed. There is a nice old Cooper's dipping powder box. It's a bit rough but it's still complete and there's no borer in it. Uh, there is an old demijohn in the corner. Looks like a chemical one. Uh, a bit of a sign there, probably a 70s, 80s sign. Uh, Sunbeam shearing gear I think that would have been. Uh, not sure what's in this pile. It looks like some sort of trunk under there and a little uh, shop display thing with Lister. The people used to run a, uh, a farming supplies business, I believe. So, oh, it looks like there's an old wool stencil down there, which I like. So I'll drag some of this stuff out. There was a old um, Malvern Star cycle, uh, bicycle, which I've taken out already. So we'll get a few things out of here. Okay, I get the impression that this shed's been rummaged through as well. There's nothing really in any of those boxes of value. Uh, this stand is a little bit damaged, but I'll still take it. The um, the stencil, I think it's a plastic. I thought it was a tin one, but I think it's just plastic. But it's probably still saleable. And unfortunately, the Demijohn has some extra ventilation. Um, and the lady did say there was a lot of demijohns here, so I reckon someone's come in and taken all the good ones, and clearly they didn't want that one. I will, however, take the threaded top. Might be handy for one demijohn down the track. I've uh, got a few garden tools, but yeah, not much at all in this little shed, so we'll move into the big one. Okay, into the bigger shed. There's going to be a few more garden tools and things. Always look out for axes. Some axe heads can bring pretty good money. Um, these hoe heads... Uh, sell very well and they're easy to fit to a piece of timber so we'll take that one now this shed has an office in one corner and is eh, not a great deal of stuff compared to some sheds we do but it has been rummaged through and I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff uh, we had a look the other day when we first came up here and every box we looked in looked as if it'd been disturbed I think people have really ratted through and grabbed anything and unfortunately Older people sometimes get taken advantage of in that they uh, they don't like stuff being thrown out and they like to help people, but people come in here and the word is that they can help themselves or at least that's how they perceive it. 
and it just gets like almost like a free-for-all the word gets out there and people come in treasure hunting and really for their own their own greed and and they don't run anything by the, the owners to say we're taking this and thanks very much they just load up and go which is a bit of a shame so we're going to i'll progressively work through here and just grab anything that has a bit of value there are some uh crock pots over here some old stoneware crocks and a bung jar if they're not damaged they'll still sell okay there could be a bit of a vintage electronics so i'll spend a bit of time there's some toolboxes but i think they've all been gone through however there will still be some value for me so i'll just make a pile over near the door and then we can work out a price for the lady and at least she'll get some benefit from it and we'll reduce some of the clutter she has to deal with this old single bed's a very early one. It's like an early, early hospital bed. Uh, it's probably circa 1900. So that should just tap apart. Those joins just, just slot together. So we'll get that in the van. I think that's worth taking back. Uh, the cane wear is not that interesting. Uh, certainly not, not going to touch the filing cabinet. Around here in the office, there is a large table. Oh, there's a bit of crockery in there too. I think the light works in here. Yep, now there's a large colonial style table there. It's got a bit of damage to the top, but I quite like that one. So we'll be getting that in the van. And the lady had cleaned it. There was a big pile of stuff over here when we looked the other day. So that's possibly why people didn't help themselves. There's some chairs here which look old, but they're probably more 1970s and I'm not going to touch them. They're very hard to sell. Uh, what else we got? There's some more vintage speakers. And there's a wall unit here which actually matches the chairs. And uh, you're pretty well hard-pressed to even give that stuff away. So that's staying right here. All right, I better make some room and get this big table out because that's going to have to go in the van first. I'll start going through boxes and making a pile of other stuff. That's a pretty cool old alarm clock, actually. Made in Germany. So, yep, that's a, that's a keeper. Bit of crockery here, English crockery. It's probably... It looks like Myatt and Sons, or something along those lines. English Ware, Lancaster's Henley, yeah. Much the same, whether it's Meakin or Myatt or um, most of the English china is just not worth what it used to be. And unless you've got some really nice, like Shelley or Royal Albert or Royal Dalton or something, that is Myatt. Uh, it's only a few brands that hold their value, and even then they've dropped a lot since the 1980s, so not as much money in English China as there used to be okay we have some nice old bit of a dressing table box here some uh, mirrors and yeah so all right there's some good stuff for us to take we'll um this looks interesting it's quite heavy I'm not sure it might be homemade maybe it's the equivalent of a tin foil hat you put that on your head and the government can't read your brainwaves hey I won't comment any further on that. You can draw your own conclusions. All right, I better get to work. It's going to get hot in here pretty quickly. So it's only just nine o'clock and it's starting to get pretty hot in this shed already. Um, I've emptied off this bed. I think it's a hospital bed. Uh, it's a pretty cool piece anyway. I could see that in our shops, um, perhaps with a lot of old blankets and quilts on it. So I think that's got a market. Not sure what it's worth. We'd probably sell it for maybe $100. Don't know been finding a few bits of reasonable stuff some little side tables a deco mirror some lamp bits some hardware items like some of the cane bits weren't too bad little retro kind of side table maybe a phone table there none of this is worth very much you know they're only kind of five dollar items but they sell okay now this coat stand whilst it's not overly old We've got one or two in our shops and we get asked to sell them all the time and we haven't had them for sale because we hang things off them. But uh, So I know at least someone will want to buy it. Uh, this big sideboard here, it's got a bit of age to it. It could be a 40s or 50s one. But um, very, very hard to sell. I'm not going to even move that. That's staying right here. Uh, there was a lot of just plumbing fittings that I don't really want. If we were doing a total cleanup, we'd take it all, of course, and they would sell. But we're saving ourselves quite a lot of work by just picking out what we want to take back. So I've made a fair dint in the middle of the shed. I don't think there's much in those piles, mostly empty boxes. I'll quickly scan along those top shelves and then I've finished all that section. 
and I better look at the uh, the big pile over here and check out the toolboxes. Okay, let's see if Christine's actually been doing some work in here. I'm always working. <laughs> <laughs> the what did I say? The engine of our relationship. That's it. So we've got a barometer. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, they're always popular. I always yeah. ask for one on the weekend, actually. Oh, you? That's your domain. We've got an ugly doll, and we know I like ugly things. That's so. St Kilda. Is it? Go the Saints. Ugly. Yeah. <laughs> You've just put uh, half the Australian subscribers go off. The blues. Um, uh, lots of records. Records. Um, suitcases. There. Oh yeah, that's a that's a Victorian um, shaving mirror. It's not yeah. called a shaving mirror. It's a dressing mirror. Dressing table mirror, yeah. perhaps. Cute vintage case. Yep. Um, so the nineteen sixties era. <laughs> You're right, Carmel. <laughs> Of jewelry. All right, we'll have to go through that we'll properly and see what's in there. Some sewing bits and pieces. Nice old vintage singer sewing machine. The fire tools and screen. Yep, yep, all of those. All right, cool. Okay. That's and, all for this room. Yep. What else have we got? And then in here we've got the contents on the table and what's down on the floor. All right. So all this. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a nice array of stuff. Yeah, there's a bit of nice English stuff amongst it. Some uh, EPNS cutlery, nice mix. What's that? Kind of cute. It's Japanese. A salt and pepper yeah. Set, but I do a lot of those. The Japs come out with a lot of quiche stuff from the fifties and sixties, and it's popular now. It's quite collectible. So, all right, over here. We've got a Sunbeam mix master with. Yep. The book. I think my mum had one identical, <laughs> and they still go. They're pretty hard to kill. You know, we find one of these in every kitchen. A swift, that's actually not a swift whip, but it's the same type of thing. That would be Bendigo pottery, I'd oh, say, I from the see. 70s. Yeah, and this is an old meat press. Oh, okay, so, yep. Oh, lucky, yeah. so you knew what it was, yeah. Well, yeah, Carmel told me what it was, <laughs> <laughs> and then she found the box. All right, well, we better work out a figure for all this stuff. And then there's some stuff in the laundry. Oh, there's some cameras in there too. In the laundry? Yeah, radios and cameras. Oh, okay. Where are they? Right here. All right. Oh, okay. I'm running out of time too. Um, so that's an old movie camera. Yep. There's a little box oh, camera. Oh, box brownie. They're pretty common, but they're always popular. Yep. Bit and of assorted pottery. A few tins. They're quite modern tins, but mm. they're Australiana. They look nice. All right. Oh, the Pyrex coffee percolators are fairly popular. Okay. Well, I guess we'll work out some prices and you can start packing okay it's almost half past 10 I've been through all those shelves and it's all junk there is nothing any good and the only things that were remotely good like that bung jar and a few other things are cracked or damaged the toolboxes the ones there are actually damaged and what's in them is just bits and pieces uh, without a doubt this place has been ransacked uh, these few boxes here had a bit of kitchen stuff in it and by the looks of the spider webs and the damage from possible rats I would say they haven't been moved for a long time so I'm just having a quick look in them but essentially the uh, the shed's done and I've got quite a pile over here of stuff that I can at least make some money out of and a few little bits and pieces for my own shed uh, this chair wasn't too bad uh, and it's been covered in plastic so that's um, a nice vintage chair in pretty saleable condition so even though the 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 guys that like garage sales or garage stuff and tools and old bottles and that sort of stuff even though they've been and had a bit of a look they're not really interested in kitchen stuff or furniture so i'll have a look through this and just see if we can find anything else and then we'll get a tally for what we've got here it won't be a great deal. Uh, we've worked out a price for inside and Christine's packing that up now and we'll, we'll give you some figures at the end of this video. This will be part one. Part two we'll process and show you a few interesting things we find and we'll probably do a part three which will be the, the final sums, how we did on the deal um, and probably a top ten. I think I like, I'm like. i going to do a top ten of our best treasures at the end of the you know, final part of one of these videos. All right. I'm ready for a coffee, I should have water, and I've got to finish this shed. Well, look at that, I have coffee and water, and I'm drinking them both. Just about done out here, so there's not much to go, and I'm getting right into my game of Tetris, which we play every time we pack the van. Uh, and Christine's got lots of boxes of stuff inside, which you just saw before. 
I just thought I'd mention when we're doing a deal like this and we're not having to clean up all the rubbish, you we get really good at making quick decisions. A lot of stuff that I, I pick up, I know I can sell. These little aluminium uh, whistling kettles, they sell all the time to campers. So, you know, I see that, I grab it nice and quick. Uh, I do have a box of spare whistle things at home. That one's missing one. But we start to, you know, you, you cull stuff really quickly. Any china with a chip or a crack, you just put to one side. Um, and it's a matter of not wasting too much time because it does take a lot of time to do these deals. As far as prints and paintings go, Generally, I don't worry with modern stuff, but a quick glance at this one, I think it's an original watercolour. It certainly has that look to it. That's enough. I'll put it in the van and I'll work it out later. Um, but most modern prints, I don't worry, unless they're um, Darcy Doyle or something that sells okay. Um, but And I've been also grabbing a lot of uh, cords and things just because they're easy to throw in. They'll just go in the e-waste, most of those. But I certainly haven't worried about a lot of e-waste here. I'll quickly scan around. Um, that's a, an old cassette deck. It's too far gone to fix and there's no value in e-waste in those things. Over this side there was a few. There was a CRT Sony TV. I might throw this one in because they have pretty good copper in them. But there's a couple of flat screen TVs I'll leave here. Uh, appliances and things like that electric can opener. It's not saleable, it's too rough, and there's only one electric motor in it. This old radio I would have grabbed if it had been in better condition, but it's very rough, it's missing bits, it's missing lots actually. The handle's been taped up, it's too far gone for a restoration project, and there's no real e-waste scrap in those at all. That was before IC chips, they've got transistors, but there's really no e-waste scrap. There's probably a little transformer in there, but we don't worry about that stuff. Uh, there's a few other things. I could start snipping cords, but I think that's a bit rude in someone's shed. Someone else may find a use for something that, that still works, and if I snip the cord off it, well, it's not going to. Obviously, there's extension cords that still belong to the property, so you've got to be sensible at that, about things like that. I have grabbed a few extension cords that were in boxes that are all uh, rolled up, and they've got old plugs on them, so they'll just go straight into the e-waste. Um, and I'm not worrying about some of the little stuff. It just takes too long if we start filling the van with all that. So I'll be finished here in a second, and then I'll go and help Christine load up the house. Hopefully everything fits in the van. Okay, it's five minutes to noon. We uh, were hoping we'd get finished by lunchtime. The van's loaded. It's only kind of really half a load because we pack so well. Although the last bit of it's a bit awkward. Um, I actually forgot about the bike until we were just about ready to go. So. Um, it's all packed up, blankets between everything, um, the awkward stuff at the top. So that should get us home alright. Now we just have to go and see Carmel and, and, I have the cash. and show yeah. us that again. Show us the money. <laughs> alright, so let's go and do that um, and we'll get home hopefully before the middle of the heat. And as we go home it's supposed to be a bit cooler home, so looking forward to that. It's been hot work in the shed. Well, yeah. we, we were pleased to be able to pick rather than have to take everything, which yeah, is, you know, yeah. we've explained that. Right, yeah. So I'll count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten makes 550. Thank you. And we, as we go through all the stuff and clean it and sort it and price it, if yeah. we find any really good treasures that we didn't really see, particularly like, say, the box of jewellery, there might be something really good in there that we missed. I doubt it, yeah. But if there is, yeah. we'll, we've got your phone number, so we'll put a bit of extra money aside for you. And that finishes our dealings. Carmel was happy with her 550. She was really pleased that we've decluttered a bit for her, and I'm sure we'll be able to afford her some extra money after we go through it all. So look out for part two coming soon.